guys, on today's video, we're going to go over the basics for your phone. doesn't matter which phone you guys have, this will be the basics for any one of these. So let's start off with the basics. As you will notice, if you scroll to the left, you're going to see your widgets. Now these are fully customizable and that's down here below. We can just edit all our widgets and we can add widgets and take out widgets. So right now, for example, we're going to tap on edit widget and we can just tap on the corner of each one to take out a widget that we don't want and we can keep any of these widgets. We can also add some widgets. On the top left hand side, you're gonna see that plus sign. Just tap on that plus sign, and here you guys can add any widgets that are missing from there. So we can add in our battery, for example, and we can choose which type of view we would like. So in this case, we're gonna choose this one, add widget, and there we go. So let me just put done. That's the basics for widgets. If you go all the way right here, we're going to see this. These are not more apps than what you guys have here. These are just the same apps organized into folders. So these are automatically done into folders for you guys to find your apps a little bit more fast. Anyways, let's just go back. Now there's a few things that you should know about your phone. For example, if you slide down like so, you're going to see your notifications. However, we can slide up. But if you do the exact same thing from the center of your phone downwards, you're going to see this search from here. You guys can search anything you would like. So just type in anything and it's going to find something related to it. I'm just going to erase a little bit. You guys can see that looking through Safari and even dictionary. So it's going to find anything, including apps to get out from there. We can just swipe up. Now, another gesture that you have to know is from this side. So the top right hand corner, just slide your finger downwards you're going to see this. This is really important because right now we can turn on our airplane mode. We can turn it off as well. It's going to put OK there. I can turn off my Wi-Fi or I can turn it back on. Same thing goes with my Bluetooth. I can turn it back on. We can do that from settings as well. However, this is the quickest way to do it. Same goes with adjusting your brightness, your volume, and we have a flashlight to turn on plus your calculator and we have quick access to our camera. We can also set it up like so, so we can turn that on so our phone doesn't bug us if we're in a meeting or something. You don't want to get those notifications. That's what you need to turn on. To turn it off, just press it again, slide up, and you're done. Again, almost everything I showed you can be done from within your settings. Now I'm going to show you one of the most important things that you should set up on your new phone. Let's just go right into your settings. Under your settings, I want you to scroll down Scroll down so you guys see control center. Just go into control center. From here, I want you to add this low power mode. We're just going to click on the add button and that's going to be added here. Anything that we don't want here, we can take it out. I'm going to show you what that is. So let me just minimize this for now. Keep in mind, I did say minimize. We didn't fully close it. On the top right hand corner, we're going to slide down. Right now, we see this. I just added this so I can turn on my low power mode on and there we go. So if you're running out of battery or you know you're going to have a long day, you won't be able to charge your phone. You want that low power mode to be on the whole time. That's very important because it does help out with your battery big time. Anytime that you don't care about it, just turn it off. And that's how you can turn it off right here on your phone. So we're going to slide up and I want to show you the long way of doing that. So right now we added that shortcut so we can just go power on, power off for a low battery mode. And we can do that from our settings as well. So let me just go back into our settings. And right here, if we scroll down just a little bit, we have to look for your battery. Here's our battery. I can turn on my low power mode just by doing that or turn it off. However, that's the long way and that's why I showed you guys how to put that into your settings so you don't have that problem. Now, once again, to turn on the flashlight of any phone for that matter, all we have to do is just tap up here, scroll down, and we're gonna see our flashlight where we can turn it on. So I just turned it on, so my flash is always working. I'm gonna turn it off and on, off and on. And that's how it works, and that's for any iPhone out there. Now to make phone calls or anything like that, you would go right here and here we can put any phone number or we can go right into our contacts, which I have none at the moment. We can go into recents and favorites, or we can just go right here, putting any phone number and just call. For now, I'm just going to get out of this. I'm going to swipe up and that's how you guys can minimize any app on your phone. 
that's not fully closing it, that's just minimizing apps. Again, I'm gonna open up iMessage. So this isn't just iMessage, this is also messages. And why is that? Well, text messages will be here in iMessage. There's a big difference between iMessage and text message. iMessage will be blue, text message will be green. A text message will be between you, an iPhone user. You guys can only do text messages between each other, but not use iMessage because iMessage is not for Android. iMessage is using your Wi-Fi network or it can be using your data. However, your text message does not. So again, to type in any message on the top right hand corner, you're gonna see this symbol. Just type right there. Just put in who you want to send this message to. Just look for that name in your contacts. It can be anyone. And then just type in your message. So start typing that in and send it away. Depending who it is, it's gonna send it automatically as an iMessage or as a text message. For now, I'm just gonna close this and that's about it for messages. Another very important gesture in order to close apps fully that we have to learn is going like this. So if you just go up with your finger, again, I'm gonna do that. Go slowly up until so you see all this. So right now I can view all my apps right here on my phone and I can fully close them or open them up. So if I wanted to open one up, I can select this one and open it up. I can just minimize it or I can go slowly again until they pop up and I can scroll through all my apps. So let's say you guys can scroll through all the apps that are open at this point in time and to fully close them, what we have to do to close an app is just go like so. Swipe up, swipe up, swipe up, swipe up, swipe up, swipe up. They're all closed. So at this point, if I go like this, I'm not gonna see anything because nothing's open. So that's another tip. It's very important to close your apps if you don't want your phone to use that much power. So that's gonna save your battery plus some data. Now I also wanna mention that if you're running low on data, you can go into settings, go into cellular, and from there, just turn on low data mode. That's something else that you can turn on. From here, you guys can also turn on do not disturb, which is good if you're in a meeting, or we can do it from here, which I mentioned before. And basically any settings that you would like to customize are always from here. Right now, we're just gonna close this up. We're gonna move on to our camera to take pictures from your phone. It doesn't matter which phone you have, the same thing for all of them. We're gonna go into our camera. It might tell you this the first time you open it up. So I'm gonna allow this, I'm gonna continue on. And here we go. So to take a picture, you can just tap here. It took one picture. So just tap once. If you hold it down, it's gonna start recording. So that's an edit that Apple has made. Before, if you held it down, it would take a ton of pictures at the same time. Now it starts actually recording a video if you hold down. However, we can just move on to video. So to take a video, we can just swipe and then press record. And we can start recording a video. Now that video is taking from the camera back here. If you want to record yourself with using the camera in the front of your phone, just tap here. So to take a selfie, record a video or anything like that, let's just change it back to photos. We're gonna tap on the bottom right hand corner. And right here we can see selfie. So we can take a selfie like so. We can take video as well. So we can change it to video, start recording a video and that's recording with the camera in the front. Stop that video. To view any of these things or to go back to my previous camera, I can go like this and now it's using my back camera. So right now I can view all my pictures in the Photos app or I can tap on the left hand side. I'm gonna see this square, just tap on it and I can view the pictures that I just took. So I'm gonna open it up again. It's right here and put got it. And those are the pictures or videos and I can just play those videos at any time. On the top, you're gonna to see play. They should play automatically without any sound. If you don't hear any sound, that means this is on. So that means it's playing without any sound. So don't worry about it. If you want to hear the sound of your video, just tap up here where it's muted and we can go ahead and play it. And there we go. Now it's playing with the actual audio of the video. So that's something that is just adjusted to iPhones right now. They don't play with sound right away. Once you play a video, you do have to unmute it, which is good because you can get annoying once you're going through your things and uh, you don't want the sound to be on all the time. To set up any alarms, we would go into clock. 
So again, same deal with any phone out there. You would always go into your clock and set up right here your alarms. That's gonna be your second option. You're gonna set up an alarm. You can actually set up quite a few alarms. On the top right hand corner, you're gonna see set up. You might see this message, sleep is now health. And you guys can go into go ahead, go health, go next. And you can set it up from here. However, you don't have to. We can go back into a clock and we can just go ahead and tap on plus sign and just set up our alarm from here. So again, you guys can actually do it a setup way, so that way, or the plus sign, which is the quick way just to set up an alarm. And the quickest way to set up an alarm is using Siri. So in order to use Siri on any phone for that matter, you're gonna see this button on the side and we can press on it and we're gonna see I Siri. So I can tell, hey Siri, what's the weather like today? It's currently foggy and 48 degrees. Expect cloudy skies starting in the afternoon. So I can use Siri to set up an alarm as well, and I don't always have to press that. That's just in case your Siri's not working properly, maybe it didn't hear you. You can always just say, hey Siri, set up an alarm for 10 o'clock. The alarm is set for 10 p.m. And there we go. So you don't have to physically touch your iPhone in order to do anything with Siri because Hey Siri works really, really well. If you find out that your Hey Siri is not working properly, it's maybe not responding to you, it might be because the low power mode. So if you put on low power mode, Hey Siri is not going to work properly. So make sure to turn that off if you want it to work properly. I'm just going to turn that off. There we go. We can also do that from settings. So we go into our low power mode. So again, we're just gonna look for that battery and we're gonna turn off low power mode. So if Siri's not responding to you, that's one of the reasons. We're just gonna close all these apps again. And at this point in time, we are gonna move on to our app store, which is right here. So in order to download any apps right here on your new phone, doesn't matter which one you guys have, you will see the search. The search is in the bottom left-hand side. Just tap on search and just search for any apps that you would like. So for example, I can type in Zoom and I can just press get in order to download it. There's also Zoom Cloud Meetings, which is a different app. Now for that app, I have a different icon and that's uh, iCloud icon right there with the arrow. That means it's been downloaded before, which it has on my other devices. And that's why it's that. If you guys haven't downloaded some apps from before, you would see get. And all you guys have to do is press get in order to download that. So right now, for example, I can just press get on PayPal and then it's going to start downloading PayPal. It might ask you to double click right here just to confirm and you're all done. So right now it's downloading PayPal app. It depends uh, which app you're downloading it might take more time, less time. It all depends on your Wi-Fi speed or your data. Right now, once it's all downloaded, I'm going to see open instead of get. So I can go ahead and open that up. I'm just gonna close it up for now because I don't need it. And that's how to download any apps on your phone. Now to search anything on the web, you're gonna see Safari. We can download Google Chrome from the App Store as well. But let's just go into Safari. And this is where you will type anything in. So I can type in up here, anything, type a search. It's gonna search and I can just open up the website. It's gonna close this up for now. And that's how you guys can search for anything right here on your phone using web browser such as Safari. Moving on to our mail app. Here's our mail app. Right now we have to set it up. And this is the most important part. So you can set up as many accounts as you guys have. So you guys can set up Google, Yahoo, Outlook, anything and everything from here. This is from where you would look at your emails and search for anything. Of course, if you don't like the app itself, you can go always to Safari and just log into your email right here. So we can go to our Gmail, Hotmail, anything using Safari as well. Now a lot of you are gonna use FaceTime all the time. So let's just tap on FaceTime. And in order to use this, you do need an Apple ID. So just type in your Apple ID and that way you guys can make phone calls to anybody using FaceTime, which uses your data or your Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna close that up for now. So it doesn't matter what phone you guys have, it's the same way. Let's just go into right here. We're gonna see all our pictures that we just took and we're gonna select a few of them. So on the top, we're gonna see select, just tap select and select a few of them or all of them. And on the bottom, we're gonna see this trash bin, I'm gonna delete them. Now they're not fully deleted, 
as of now. We can go into our albums, scroll down. You're going to see recently deleted. You're going to see your pictures right there. So we can go ahead and recover these pictures or fully delete them at this point. So in order to fully delete them, tap on whichever you would like to fully delete and tap on delete. Delete for items and there we go. If for some mistake you guys erased any of your pictures from your phone, you want to get them back, we can always go down again to recently delete it. Okay, so again, that would be from your photos. As long as you go into albums, scroll down, recently delete it, you, you click on select, then select that picture, then can press recover, it's going to move back into my library. So that was a video, for example, same deal if it was a picture. If you want to fully delete them or recover them all, you can press recover, recover three pictures. So if you did that by mistake at any time, you can recover them. And right now they're back here. And again, I can just delete them and they're gonna move back to that folder if I wanted to do that. So it depends what you guys are doing this for. But that's how to recover or delete pictures on your phone. I'm just gonna close this up. Now to look up any documents that you may have downloaded, you guys can go right into your files. So let's just open up files. We're gonna type in any file that we're looking for and search. Obviously, if it doesn't look find anything, there's nothing here. We can also go into browser and we do have to sign into our iCloud in order to browse any documents that are online. But that's where all our files will be located in whichever phone you guys have. There's also a few other apps right here. So numbers would be like Excel, pages would be like Microsoft Word, and Keynote would be like Microsoft PowerPoint. GarageBand is just to edit audio or make audio, and iMovie would be to edit video or make videos as well. Find My Phone is a pretty cool app because if you ever lose your phone, you guys can find it that way. And if you would like to know any family members where they are at all times, <laughs> you guys can also do it from Find My Phone. But that's a bit more specific. I do have a separate video for that. Anyways, those are the bare basics when it comes down to any phone. So once again, it doesn't matter which phone you guys have, it's gonna be the exact same tutorial for any one of these. Anyways, if you guys have any comments, questions, you guys can write down here in the comments area and don't forget to subscribe and rate. Thank you.